Okay, uh, this is the first the first official video of the series. Um, so back to what I was saying earlier. I'm not sure. I've had some technical issues. So hopefully this will work. But this is the first actual video, and I'll put that in the comments so people will know. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so down below. I think you can hit subscribe, and I think... I don't know if I have a way for you to hit a bell or anything like that so you get all notifications. But if you do subscribe, you should be able to find the uh, notifications there. Uh, so basically what happened was I got uh, out of the military, put on a lot of weight. I still have a turkey neck. i got to work on that. I don't know. There's exercises for that, I guess. But I still have this gobbly turkey neck. Uh, and when I got out, I was in my 30s. And I put on a lot of weight. Um, and I got sick because of that i got the different things that we get with uh putting on a lot of weight diabetes uh at, at first they treated it just diet and exercise then it got a little worse 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 and worse so uh i had two health scares uh, well, i had more than two health scares i had two hospitalizations the first one was prior to my 50th birthday i think i was uh maybe i was like 49 right at 49 so this is now I can this is bugging me because I can see it. I gotta hide it. But anyway, um, uh, I got uh, a, a, a bruise on my on my on my leg, and I would take a shower uh, later in the day. And I saw that I had redness on my leg, and I thought maybe the shower had done it. Turned out it was cellulitis. Uh, I ignored it, uh, like we always do. We always think, oh, it's nothing. Uh, went to the hospital on a Friday, and they were going to uh, do some. They first they thought maybe it was some kind of like a uh, one of those, uh, you know, fleshing bacteria things, uh, because I had a big hole, like a hole in my leg. But it turned out it was cellulitis. And I said, well, I was going to go to the doctor on Monday. They said, well, you would have probably been in the morgue on Monday. That's how bad it was. And I had to stay there until my numbers, uh, my heart rate would get to a number that would be acceptable to leave the hospital. And that took uh, an overnight in the hospital. And then home uh, pills of uh, antibiotics and leg up and all that. So you think I would learn uh, to do better then? I, you know, I almost died, they said. Um, and I did. I did better for a very short period of time. Then a number of years later, um, when I, it was 2018, so I was about 57, uh, I had a little teeny bump on the bottom of my toe. I thought it was nothing. It was a blister. We always get blisters. We're kids. When we're kids, we get blisters, we get scrapes, we get bruises, whatever. No big deal. But as a diabetic, it's a big deal. So on my big toe, they call it the grand toe, on my right foot, I had a little teeny hole. And I didn't realize the bone is so close to the, it makes sense, the bone is very close to the outside skin. And I developed a bone infection. I'll look it up and I'll put in the comments below what it was, what it's called. But it started spreading and I let it go, let it go, let it go. Went to the hospital, um, I think it was December 17th or something like that. I can look it up. And I was in the hospital for nine days. They want to cut my leg off. And it makes sense. What they do is they find a place where there is no, there was no infection and they cut onto the good part of the skin or the foot, the, foot, the leg, whatever they're going to amputate, and they cut it off. They want to take off my, first they said part of my foot, then my, then maybe we could just do just the toe, then at first, at first they're saying I might lose my whole leg. And they kept explaining to me, this is not life-threatening, this is leg-threatening. <laughs> this is loss of leg, not loss of life. So they agreed to allow me to try something, uh, to take antibiotics at home. When I had to be in the hospital for nine days because I had a, the infectious disease, for the infectious disease people had to figure out what was the best uh, antibiotics to fight the actual infection I had, so they could keep recreating the infection and little, those little uh, things. I don't know what they call, them. but they had to figure out what it would fight the best. They figured it out, so they let me go home after nine days. After nine days in the hospital, that's a long time considering I never go to the hospital really. Um, got home and for. For, for, for six weeks, six weeks, I had to take four IVs a day, uh, every uh, like every six hours or something like that. Uh, maybe, I don't remember, but I took two at once and then I take two others. I take one, it was a big one, they, they call them cassettes, but they look like, kind of like balls and they put the, the IVs into your arm. I'd have a pick line which takes the IVs from my arm down into next to my heart so it pumps down. They're worried that my vascular system wasn't strong enough to bring the, the, the stuff down there, so they would take needles and shoot directly into my toe. 
ow, it hurt, but it, it, it worked. So I was able to save my toe, six weeks. They didn't think it would ever work. They thought for sure I'd be back in a couple of weeks. Look, this is too much to take off my toe. How, you know, how does a person work when they're taking IVs uh, you know, every, every six hours? It was tough. I'd work a couple hours and then, then back to the thing and then try not to fall asleep uh, and, and do that. So anyway, did that for six weeks. I was able to save my toe. And that's when I kind of got the motivation. Hey, this is not gonna be good. Diabetes, for example, it doesn't hurt until it's too late. It doesn't hurt. It, it sucks. You know, you can't eat everything you want. But you take shots, you take pills, you take whatever, and you can survive. And then you lose a leg, you lose a hand, you lose your eyesight, you, your kidneys fail. Something horrible is gonna happen. And then you're probably gonna have a stroke and die. Up from that, and we're all gonna die someday. But that kind of started the motivation. And that's what this first video is about. This is the first video. The first thing I did was to determine my motivation and my willpower to see if I can determine my willpower. They said at the hospital, the, the doctor, the surgical team, of course, want to remove my toe. The medical team, they were kind of thinking maybe you should remove the toe, but we'll work with you. But the surgical team, the doctor said, well, you're going to leave here and you're going to go straight to the first drive through and get two or three half pound hamburgers or whatever. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. So I had to go and do the uh, figure out my motivation what do i want to do do i want to die young or then i would be dying or, or regularly do i want to have a horrible life do i want to miss be missing a leg I mean, you miss out on a lot you know i'm not saying anything's wrong with someone that has to miss a leg have to have a leg removed or whatever but if you don't have to have it why do it so that was the first thing determining my motivation why, why am i motivated to do this i know what to do i know what to do the doctors have been telling me for years what to do. The, the nutritionist, the pharmacist, they all have told me for years what to do. Years and years and years and years. I just didn't do it. So this is the time I had to sit back and say, okay, here it is. I'm, I'm sitting in a, in a recliner at my house with an IV stuck in my arm, bringing it down into my, hopefully,